Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a broadcast over here talking about an online uh, project we've been doing with Russia. We're bringing people in from Russia, California, all those foreign places. And uh, we'll see how it goes, okay? Okay. Well, good to see y'all. We'll put it down a little bit here. Uh, unfortunately, I think next time I've got to remember that I don't want to set this up at lunchtime. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so if nothing else, what we can do, uh, people will be coming in and out. But why don't we go ahead and do it, and then, you know, it'll be recorded. It'll be something we can put up there, and then I'd like to do this again in October at a present presentation at our Iowa uh, conference, if all of you would be interested. Yes, okay? absolutely. Good. Okay, well then, why don't we get started? Okay. So, um, global greetings to everyone there at ISTE 2016 in Denver. Or if you're listening to our on demand playback session as we're recording this, and we're excited to share our Global Forest Link project with you. My name is Dr. Yvonne Marie Andres. I'm the co founder of Global Schoolnet and the Education and Outreach Director for Global Forest Link. Uh, the purpose of Global Forest Link is to connect youth locally and globally to collaboratively investigate forest change and to share their observations through digital stories. My colleague, Dr. Elena Yulova, will now introduce herself and one of our champion Russian teachers. Hi, my name is Elena Yulaeva, and together with uh, Dr. Andres, we are leading this exciting project. I'm. <laughs> I'm a, a executive director of the Community Commons and Small Nonprofit that is in, uh, very much involved in the environmental education. And I'm really pleased to introduce Irina Ushakova, who is currently in Ulanade, Russia, a, a city near Lake Baikal. And it's 11:30 uh, a.m. her time, tomorrow our time. <laughs> More exact, it's 2.36. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> yeah, and it, it feels great actually to, well, to discuss it with the colleagues. And so I was a teacher, um, I'm a teacher of one of the partner schools in this project, and we participated in both Pylon, and now we are now in the current project. So we're actually enjoying with our students. Great. So I know we have a very short amount of time. We prepared some slides for you. And so what I'd like to do is see if I can share my screen. And then we're going to give you more details about the project and hopefully get you excited enough to um, participate because we're looking for uh, schools to join us um, in September. So let me do a screen share here. Hi, OK. Um, Isti, can you see my screen? Yes, OK, great. All right, so um, Elena is going to give us a little bit of background about uh, the Global Forest Link project. So let me go to the next slide. Oh, and by the way, we thought we were very clever in coming, fitting the Star Wars theme and uh, coming up with this title, May the Forest Be With You. So um, thank you for your appreciation of our creativity on that one. Elena, back to you. Hi again, thank you for listening. Um, I'm really uh, excited to introduce our project. The uh, name of the project, as you have heard, is Global Forest Link. And this is a unique project in the sense that it helps students to learn and to link various skills within the main STEM subjects, science, uh, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And the students in this project, the students learn how to collect and analyze their own data, how to connect this data that they collected with the other ex ex uh, data, including remote sensing satellite images data. Uh, they learn how to use uh, remote Earth observations and how they work. They do their own research and uh, talk to experts they collaborate with their peers, not only 
in their schools, not only in their country, but all over the world, uh, in particular in our first uh, two projects, these were the peers uh, from uh, Russia and the US who collaborate with each other. They produce the digital stories based on uh, the uh, research that they have done. And they uh, uh, use all their creativity to produce their stories. And then they publish them, share them online, and discuss their stories and uh, comment on each other's stories. Great. Yeah. And um, uh, Lee, if you're still there, I just want to remind you, we'd love to get some photographs of yes. this session. Okay, just, just <laughs> I know and, we're... And Lee, if you can mute your microphone when you're not talking, it will be great. Got it. Okay, so we're going to go to the next slide. Yes. Uh, so the project started last fall, and uh, we had two schools in San Diego, California, and one school in Buratia, Russia. And on the slide, you see the maps. These are the satellite images of this of the uh, loss of the forests in California and in Buratia. And then you have like the uh, picture of Alana Day of like Baikal and of San Diego, and then pictures of the teams. Uh, we had uh, around 80 participants, three schools. And at the time we started the project, there were huge fires in both Baikal and in California areas. And from the very beginning, students could relate to each other uh, stories, and they started to understand that probably even if they are so far apart, the, uh, neighbor, their uh, commu communities are experiencing the same problems, not the, in Russia and in the US. Great. Uh, then, uh, starting in this March, we had another stage of the project in which we had uh, 17 teams in Russia and four in the US. We got, at this time, we got 300 participants. The map that you see is the map from our portal that is originally Google map um, that shows the locations of the cities uh, of all the teams that participated in this stage of the project. Uh, this map, as I said, it's on our portal. So if you go there and click on the uh, pin for each team, you, you will, uh, the a page dedicated to this team will open and you will uh, be able to read a story and you will be able of this team and you will be able to uh, see the pictures of the participants from this team. Um, the uh, emphasis, uh, can, I haven't finished, the emphasis of this last, uh, of this project uh, at this stage was on the digital stories. So uh, students created digital stories from all this place, uh, describing the forest in all these places. Next. Um, the, um, as I said, uh, the, um, uh, project is unique in the sense that it provides uh, students with an opportunity to uh, participate in the project-based learning. And uh, we have the portal, which is a central part of the project, that has all the tutorials uh, that are needed, and uh, most of these tutorials include videos, and uh, students can go over these tutorials on their own pace. They also uh, uh, can uh, participate in the webinars, in the training webinars, and we have recordings of the webinars so that they can actually watch them and they were not able to participate in the live events. Uh, students collect data and, ent and enter their data via online forms. They collect images of the forests and fill out the data form. Then these images and metadata are post-processed and compiled into visual analysis tools that st and uh, also connected to the satellite images so that uh, it allows students to analyze photos and metadata and use it in their research. And then uh, the portal also has videos with the experts and uh, um, all the webinars are also uh, recorded and put there. And this allows uh, students to use 
all these elements of the portal and to produce the digital stories and to publish them online and share them with their peers. So if I could just add to that, so um, the students are working um, independently at, uh, at their schools, um, learning about these different topics, environmental science and, and forest health, and they're using all of these innovative tools, and then we provide a structure for them to be able to collaborate with other uh, classrooms that are participating in this project and share their experiences and it can be within the United States across the United States or it can be uh, across the globe as we've done in the past two years uh, con connecting um, youth in America and youth in Russia. Uh, I just want to add that uh, it's not only after school activities in our first project most of the schools had it as the in the class setting within the environmental science uh, AP environmental science uh, class, but uh, the beauty of this project is you can actually adapt it to different situations. Great. Next slide. Uh, as I said, the project provides a variety of opportunities uh, for participants to communicate with, with, with each other, with project leaders, with, with experts, etc. We convene uh, training webinars and post recordings online, so whoever was not able to participate uh, can watch them afterwards at any convenient time. We um, invite experts uh, and students uh, can interview the experts. And again, we record these interviews and they are online. Um, we uh, have uh, live meetings, online meetings, when students have an opportunity to uh, communicate with each other, with peers from different countries, cities, etc., and uh, share their uh, project experience, but also ask questions about cultures and customs of the places where these other uh, counterparts are located. And these are really exciting meetings that all, everyone loves. Great. We, uh, okay, so um, moving right along, I know that one of our big goals in doing this session with you, anybody that's watching live or, or even the recorded session is we're getting, uh, we're ramping up for the next phase, which will start in September. So we know that you might be thinking about it, maybe you've never done a global learning project or you're wondering, you know, how can I make this successful? So um, we're gonna give you a few of those insights and a few of those tips. So I can tell you I've done literally a thousand global learning projects. And the biggest um, advice that I can give you is to be able to prioritize your learning outcomes. So what you're looking at is a slide with just some examples. This isn't um, a formula that everybody's going to follow, but you cannot do all of these things equally. So when I work with teachers, I help them uh, customize their learning plan. So uh, this is a typical one. So teachers want their students to gain knowledge. Obviously, um, you know, whatever the, the subject is, whether it's environmental science or journalism, um, you know, any of those things, they need to be able to gain knowledge, you know, pass their tests, that kind of a thing. Often, uh, teachers want their students to become uh, better project managers and time managers. So a, a part of what we do is help uh, set these project goals, the scope of the project, do some risk analysis, that kind of a thing. Um, often a very big part of it is the global interaction. They want them to become more culturally aware, geographically aware of what's happening in the rest of the world. What's very important to us, and we hope is very important to everyone else, is the digital storytelling part. Because that's what institutionalizes the activity. So if you do this one year and you have your students create these digital stories, then you can show them to the next group of students and the next group of students go, oh, well, they did that, well, I can do better. And it gets better and better every single time that you do it. Obviously, when you're working in a collaborative project, you're gonna be teaching them collaboration and teamwork skills. And we always try to uh, use the most appropriate and new technologies. And in this case, they're gonna be using um, the Global Forest Watch platform, which is fantastic because it gives them a visualization of the work that they're doing and they're actually contributing authentic information that's going to be helping the scientists. So uh, what are the things that are, uh, you have to be aware of? 
Uh, what are the challenges? And these are some obvious ones. You're in a global learning uh, playground, so you've probably heard these many times before. But again, we work with you to help mitigate some of these things. So there's language differences. There's things that we can do to uh, make that work better so that if you know English is not your first language, you know there's still um, quality sharing that's going on. Time zones. Always an issue. In this case, as Irina said, you know, it's 2.30 in the morning her time, but she's so excited to share her information with you that she's willing, you know, to stay up and, and do this and, and interact. Uh, different holidays, different weather conditions. Often some big event is planned and then there's a snowstorm or there's fires or there's floods or there's something, you know, unexpected. Testing schedules, you know, different levels of technology access. Uh, content standards and transportation if it's something that requires field research and you know the students need to get out uh, into an area to do their research so all of these things can be managed if you're aware of them going into it um, what I'd like to do is turn it over to Arena who has lived through this project for two years and has done it with her students and she's going to share some of her insights and tips from what she's learned working with her students Okay, thank you. So, uh, in the last two years, when I started this project, really many great things happened to me and my students. Well, so I would like to emphasize now on our, the advantages, um, some of the tips and challenges that teachers and students can face in this project. So, the greatest advantage for me was, of course, learning many new things together with my students. You know, I never used to settle at images in English lessons before, as I'm a teacher of English uh, language, but you know, I just never had this chance. And so, um, I also never made for some extra classes and uh, lots of project work. So, the project was challenging a little bit for the first time, especially in terms of organizing uh, the students' work. And, you know, as I taught not just my group of students, um, but also the, the selected students from the whole school. So um, uh, we had some difficulties in like informing the whole school and everybody about the last assignments and the deadlines. So however, we could solve this problem by creating our own GFL group on Facebook. What was really great, of course, it let me and my students to finally or collaborate and communicate better. I could post the announcement on the Facebook, in, in Facebook. I could left some tasks there for my students. And so we just had better communication. And of course, our use of the Global Forest Link site um, was more than helpful for my students and me. You know, I didn't have to worry about the materials of the course. Of course, well, just everything is ready for you on the site. Uh, however, for a teacher, it would be great if, uh, if a teacher somehow controls the process of learning the tutorials uh, by students, you know. For this purpose, I met with my students. Um, in the pilot project, we met once in two weeks, and uh, we met every week in the current project, uh, simply because I had to have some feedback from my students to make sure that they have no difficulties. And, uh, you know, it will depend uh, on the group of the students, their level, um, and uh, some other factors that vary from school to school. But I can tell you one thing, you know, uh, somehow it also connected with, with their English uh, language. Uh, fortunately, my students, they were so much inspired by collaboration with American schools that they even are... Um, uh, they even continued to speak uh, English language in the current project where actually it was quite possible to use the Russian one. Um, and so besides uh, that, you also need to make sure that students understand every aspect of the project. So you see some of them may have problems with analyzing satellite images. Um, others maybe uh, will have some problems making video or writing their stories. And so, well, I could cope with these problems, inspiring them to work together. I just try to organize the group so that some of the people were good at one thing and other ones and another ones. And so this is how we uh, made it happen. Um, well, and uh, 
Um, I would also like to pay your attention to now the second slide because now I'd like to emphasize more on the uh, advantages for teachers. And that is, I would like to emphasize on the teachers' exchange. Uh, so, uh, you see, um, when, when I started my collaboration with American schools, I was a fellow of Social Expertise Exchange Program, and it, it happened to me two years ago. So I came to United States, I, uh, I just learned a lot of, lots of new things, I met lots of great people, leaders, colleagues, and I, of course, changed my perception of the country. It made me feel that I'm a global citizen when I started to discuss the problems with my colleagues. And so finally, after some time, we, I started this project with uh, Yelena Yulaeva and uh, Yvonne Mary Andrus, and uh, you know, we really, we are, we enjoy it. And this is how, uh, how it happened to me. Uh, besides that, I get back, I got back to United States our uh, last year, I visited our uh, two more schools and we discussed some of the details of the project. Um, and this is how it worked for one, uh, my, for one more colleague from America, Rose Hanscom, who actually visited uh, Lake Baikal and Buryatia Republic and my city and my school just last week. And uh, I could hardly just believe it right now, but that happened and it was great because Rose also enriched uh, greatly from this experience. Uh, you know, we, uh, we didn't just uh, uh, learn more about uh, Global Forest Link and we didn't just, uh, so to say, learn more about ecological problems, but we had an opportunity to fill the culture to uh, you know because what well teachers when they exchange they discover new culture they learn more about their global problems and of course they open new horizons to their teaching and finally they started to feel the greatest responsibility not only for their local ecological problems but also for the problems of the globe and this is how they give their students uh, this way to feel about the globe and so I just want to thank the leaders again of, this, of the project because it, it's really great. So soon you will see. Great. 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 We're going we're gonna to have to uh, move on a little bit. But um, I just want to say that I think the things that, um, that I pick up on when I hear uh, teachers like Irina and Rose and others talk about these global projects is the dispelling of myths. And if you live in a country like the United States, the students are not exposed to uh, very much international news. So they have a very, um, you know, minimal understanding of, of what's happening in the rest of the world and how it affects them. So it's really important to create these, you know, people to people connections. Um, we were going to show you two videos, but we're not going to have time to do that because I really want to tell you about the next phase. But I, we will make this presentation available to you and you can look at all of the videos. We have something like I don't know, Elena, what is it, 60 or 80 videos that were submitted, stories that were submitted uh, by both um, students in Russia and the United States. So um, we had quite a few, we actually had a contest uh, for the best digital story. We did a little tutorial about how to create a digital story and we awarded prizes for the best content, the best technical, and the most creative ones. So um, this one from um, Irina's school was wonderful. Uh, we were gonna show it to you, but that's two minutes, so uh, we're sort of running out of time. And then this one here was kind of fantastic from Iowa. Uh, the students talked about forest health from the perspective of a deer. So you might wanna uh, look at this one when you have a chance. Um, what I'd like to do is just tell you about the opportunities that are coming up and then open it up to anybody that might have some questions because um, this is the opportunity to talk to us. Yvonne? Yeah. Yvonne? Yes. Uh, they'd like to see the videos. They're willing to wait a couple minutes. If you oh, want to go okay. ahead and show them. Okay. We can, we can do it. We can do it. Let me go back here. Oh, oh. All right. So I'm clicking on this and let's see if this works for us. Loading, 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 loading. Hello, my name is Andrew. My name is Andrew. 
This is a presentation. We don't see the video. Say again. We we see the presentation. We don't see the. That's yeah, in the video. Okay. Let me. Maybe I need to do a, a share for this too. So hang on here. Uh, yeah. Just we don't need any slides anymore. Right. Just, just. right. Let me. Well. Okay. Let me do this. Let me tell you. Let me show you the last slide, and then we'll go to the videos. That way we don't have to go back to the slides. So. Um, last slide for people that are watching is we want you to register for the next phase which is going to happen uh, September through December and we're excited to say we're adding new languages we're adding new content which we call um, a, a unit on urban forests for, uh, for for students that are living in cities like Chicago and Washington DC and and Los Angeles and so on that may not feel like they're in the middle of a forest, but you but everybody has to be concerned about forest health health and tree cover. And there's lots of um, um, things to be learned no matter what part of the the, um, the country you're living in. We're going to be adding new countries. So it's it's expanding by, beyond just the US and Russia and you'll be able to interact with some new countries. And we're in the process of preparing some resources and some guides, and we will have new challenges and awards similar to what we had uh, last year. Again, we're always looking for the best stories. Um, we want you to, if, you, if you're really interested in this, please join us on Facebook, where we'll be announcing all of these things. We have a Twitter um, 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 link as well. And of course, the website, you can go and look at all the stuff on the website. Okay, so now I'm going to do a new share, and I'm going to go to the video, which is somewhere. Uh, Yvonne? Yeah. When you share it, one of the choices on that page when you share it is to share it with computer sound. Make sure you put the computer sound, select that part, because otherwise we won't be able to hear it. Okay, so I see that. I'm clicking on computer sound. And now I am looking for where this is. I think, oh my gosh, where is it? Um, see the Let's see. I think this is it. Let's see if this works. Uh, share your computer audio and assume, uh, install the audio device. Um, is it possible for Lee, for you to, you have the presentation there, for you to just click on the video? Because it's only, it's only the people that are in Denver that need to see this. Obviously, we all, we know what this is. It's needed to install some uh, video device, which we right, don't. Without, I, I think we can, if you do it the, like you did the first time, we can hear it. Yeah? Just okay, let's see. Sure. All right. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Let's see if you can hear this. Hello. My name is Andrew. My name is Nancy. My name is Nancy. We are students from Nancy. Okay. Did you hear that? Yes. Okay. I'm going to continue then. Now the 61 Russia. This is our project about forest healing by Carl. By Carl is a new creation of nature. It's the deepest lake on earth with purest crystal water. It's surrounded by many national parks and nature preserves that have forests now conceded into uh, the community. Like the forest in the Baikalski National Park and analyze the condition of the forest. Does this forest have problems? Okay, that um, didn't like that. So let's see if we can go back and do a screen share again. I'll tell you what, Yvonne. Why don't, why don't, why don't we finish this off and then I can simply go to the website and I, we can play a couple of them, okay? Okay, let's let's open it up to Q and A because we have Irina there at security in the okay. morning. People might have some questions for her. Right, that's that we can do that. Okay. Okay, yeah. Q and A questions. Why don't you stand up? So I wanted to know: Is this done with a classroom, a grade level? Oh, you're. That's okay. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> a classroom, grade level, a whole school. How is this project normally done? Can you hear that, Yvonne? 
Yeah, so the answer is yes to all of those things. There's every implementation model. Um, Irina, how did you implement this? You did this with your with your. Well, I implemented it as some project work for my extra class activities. So we we did it after classes. But you would you know you would I would actually can do some of them during my classes because I have like six lessons of English every week. And so basically I can spend 20 minutes or 30 minutes every week on this project and that'll be fine. We had it implemented in, in as a block in AP environmental science and as a block in ninth grade biology class and different other activities. So in, in uh, Chicago, in Iowa, um, and in San Diego, it was part of their class period. And um, all students, in some of the classes, all students uh, were required to participate and, and do this activity and then you know, create their digital stories. And then we did it with another group in Washington, D.C., and that was extra. That was during, do, done during Saturdays. So there really is every implementation model. And this is a secondary project, would you say 9-12? So um, it, I think upper elementary, middle school, and high school. Yes. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? I guess that's it. It looks like you might have at least one, one new hire here. Well, I wanted to ask, where is she from? <laughs> Colorado. We would love to have Colorado because obviously Colorado has a lot of um, oh, big challenges going on with forest health and forest issues. Yeah. So yeah, we'd love yeah. to. What grade level? Um, I work at the district level at a district in Colorado Springs, and we definitely have these issues going on, um, specifically around. If you know any um, the new what was in the news a couple of years ago, it's been two years where we had the black forest fire that wiped out acres and acres and acres of our forest and destroyed many of the homes in our school community. So, um, so this being a, a, an interesting project for teachers and students. So please get a hold of us and, and so we know who you are and we can like continue this conversation because we would love, you know, to, we are even looking for regional coordinators. So if we can work with you as a regional coordinator and, you know, you can help us uh, reach out to some of the schools and, and youth organizations in your area, that would be great. You know, that would be great. I am part of a um, tech leader forum that's here in Colorado. We meet on a monthly basis. And I'm also part of a Colorado School Library Leader group that also meets on a monthly basis that we all come in from different areas of the state and meet. So it would be fun maybe to even talk about this as a project in Colorado and maybe Skype in with you during one of these yeah, meetings. We'd love to do that. Or use Zoom. Hey. <laughs> if you can, if you can leave your information with Liam. All of yes. 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 I will. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. The last day of the conference. So thank you for listening, and and it will feel very successful if we see you in September and, and we get some of your schools involved. So, <laughs> so with that, we're going to say bye-bye. Uh, and we'll, yeah, and so I'm going to stop recording. Lee, I'll let you say the last goodbye, and then we'll, we'll connect a little bit later. Well, as Obi-Wan Kenobi would say, <laughs> May the forest be with you. May the forest be with you. Bye. I really hope that this, is good. this is a great project. Oh, there we go. This is a great project, and I've been talking to a lot of people that are in So, have a good day. Bond is very fond of the forest. Bye, Rina. Goodbye, Ilana. Bye. Bye, Ivan.